There are so many people that's being tremendously affected by this that the world is not seeing. We paint this bad picture that everything about the end and the world gonna be destroyed. No, you are lost, devil. It ain't yours to destroy. My grandma used to bring us here every year to go fishing. We didn't understand the importance of that then. All we wanted to do was play, run, and joke. And she would just sit there for hours quiet and just fish. And now you really appreciate those days now. She's long gone now, but this is our source. Free water. Get your free water right now at Joyce Tabernacle Church. I have lived in Flint, Michigan since I was seven, so that makes 23 years with the exception of when I went to prison. I met Aaron as a young man who uh, came home from prison and I watched him transform into the most loyal person I personally have met in the church. If rich people could bottle this up and sell it, they would. They doing it, everything else. Water was free, they selling that. And ours ain't even good, you can't even use it, they still selling it to us. Yeah. Um, we would be in church having service and you can hear gunshots like right across the street. Most of those same people who were involved in some of those activities are now trusted members of our church. These are people that just need to be loved on. Yeah, <laughs> Cynthia was on crack. Cynthia oh, got man. off of crack. How long you been clean? 12, be 12, 12 years. years. Cynthia went back to school. She made the dean's list. My brother had passed from um, suicide, and it, it just hurt it so bad because he had left for Texas, and for him to just come back and then boom, he killed himself. You know, we all like wondering what happened, why this happened. I really believe it was lead related. I really do. Because it was so unexpected. You know, lead creates aggression. And I said, oh my God, what about aggression? We think of aggression to somebody else. What about aggression to self? It's easier for me to hold myself up during the day and cry at night. Mm. I'm only a human being, mm. and it's only so much that I can hold and deal with. Mm. In the back of my mind, I'm like, man, I want to go find somebody and just commit a random act of violence and let them feel my pain. And that's exactly how I feel, but I won't do it because won't, it won't justify anything. Noah Patton is uh, a blessing from God. He's my little brother in the ministry. He said unto him, thou hast rightly judged. I'm going to tell you the truth. I made money when I was in the streets. I did everything I had, every car I ever wanted, every gun I ever wanted. And then I ended up in jail. And I couldn't even teach my son how to tie the Jordans that I bought him. He was just tearing them up. His mother killed herself when uh, Noah was 15 while he was in the house. Uh, he lived in the house for uh, like two and a half years after that with no lights, no water, no nothing. My daughter was molested while I was in jail and all of that ran into together and said, man, I gotta get out and do what I gotta do and don't go back. And this is the infamous county jail. I remember many days and nights looking out those windows just wishing I could trade places with even, you know, homeless people watching them just walk free. Uh, the crime rate in Flint for the last 10, 15 years has been high. Number one in per capita in violent crime, overall crime. No, this, uh, this crisis, what's sad about it is it was created by man. It wasn't created by a natural disaster. People created it. Even the cause of this water crisis, the shifting of a water for people in modern society with EPAs and all of the environmental protections would have ever happened to a rich, affluent neighborhood. They put dictators into Flint. They called them emergency managers. One of the emergency managers signed over to the Flint River without all of the safeguards being built in. Now they're all pointing fingers at each other. But the lesson has to be, you can't take government away from the people. This was the water that, that corroded the pipes. When they switched back over to this water here, not treating it properly, 
was the reason that we're in the mess that we're in now. So they didn't add the proper chemicals it took to, to balance it out right, trying to save a little more money, and hence our situation now. It's a tough place. We lost our jobs. It used to be a great manufacturing town. Employed 80,000 people, General Motors. Now it employs maybe six or 7,000. So if you look over here, this is one of their plants. Here, this is one that is still operational. They stopped using the water because they said the water was corroding their engines and locking their engines up. So imagine what it's doing to a, a person. There was a surplus of houses and a lack of jobs. So when you ride down our streets, many times it looked like a war-torn area. On the north side of Flint, which is the, the, the largest part of the city, there are no grocery stores. So they call it a food desert, a job desert, and now a water desert. The majority of our schools are closed, but on my taxes every year, every six months, I'm still paying for schools that we don't have in our area. Hey, mister, we're not supposed to be here when there's no school. You go in that schoolyard and you play there. And if anybody says anything, you tell them your parents help pay for it. You can come down the street on any given day in the summertime and all the houses was filled with kids playing. It was just like a real vibing, thriving neighborhood. Coming more visitors each year from other cities, other nations. Educators, business leaders, and parents come here to see for themselves. And what they see is phenomenal. This is where we played at in the backyard, and outside, down the street, after the lights was off, you know. It, we were able to do those things, you know, and I think our kids today deserve that same uh, chance and opportunity. A health-guarded child was one with no correctable physical defects Good unattended. Day, now you're health-guarded. In just three years, the number of health-guarded children increased tenfold. This is my home. Um, as you can see when you come in, you can see tons of water. Uh, it's normally a whole lot more than this, um, but I've just been kind of tired, so I ain't been bringing none home lately. Um, but this is the water that we use to do everything with. For my safety and the safety of my family, I just, I just turned off all the water to all our faucets. So now when you come to my house and you cut on water, nothing comes out. Because I don't want the mistake of my daughter coming and turn on water and, and using water that's contaminated and poisoned. But again, this is what my daughter and my wife used to take baths in. So we heat up water in this big pot over here uh, that's on the stove. We heat up water in there and we put water in here. And this is where they bathe at. Um, Unfortunately, now when I tell my daughter it's time to take a bath, she runs to the tote instead of to the bathroom. I mean, it really hurts, you know, for my daughter to think this is what taking a bath is like. This is what, this is her perception of taking a bath. This water crisis started a little over two years ago. My daughter is almost two. Um, so she was born into this water crisis. Um, since she's been born, she's been in the hospital three major times. Uh, she spent every Christmas of her life in the hospital. You know, as I slept in the hospital on the floor, watching my daughter can't leave from five feet from her bed because she's hooked up to all these different machines. You know, it, it as a father, it, it, it almost destroys you, you know, and it, and it pushes you to make, to want to be able to help make the situation go away. Good morning. How are you? We've been dealing with the poverty, the employment and all that, which are, systemic issues surrounding the water. Good. Thank, Thank you, God. Jesus. So it gave us an advantage because we already had our, our arms and hands in the community. All right, welcome everybody again to George Tabernacle Church. When the government is not there to help, and when the government is not doing what we pay them to do, then we have to do what God is paying us to do. I got Scotty right here, come get him to go to some of the areas where the National Guard says it's too dangerous to go. And to be able to see these are nice people. These are people who are grateful, are, who are in a position to where they can't help themselves. Well, we're going we're gonna to knock on all these doors, and we're going to give water. Yeah, we just came in from Detroit. 
Detroit, man. How y'all find the people, though? We just knocked on doors. See, I'm scared to knock on doors. <laughs> oh, yeah, y'all see? That's how you do it. Right. You, know, you don't see the big shots. I don't see them going door to door. How can you be scared to come and give people stuff they need? Are you putting up? We're giving them water and filters. And this woman comes out, young mom, you know, probably I'd say in the late 20s. And you would have thought we were the second coming. It's like she grabs me and hugs us. And I'm thinking to myself, wow. I mean, this is how bad it is, see? And I look over, and there's two little babies over there, maybe three and four years old, and they got blankets on. See, now I'm thinking, what? This is America, and we're giving money to Iraq and Iran and Afghanistan, and we're not taking care of our own people. That's bullshit. I said it. The problem will not get solved until they take out all of the lead service lines. And if somebody's going to say, well, that's going to be expensive. Well, yes, it's going to be expensive. And you, you got a rainy day for them that you don't want to use. Well, it's porn. They can pump poisonous water into the system, into our kids' body for years. This wasn't just an accidental oil spill. Don't drink the water for a couple. This was more like, we want to make sure they get full of lead. They feel like it was almost, they felt like they made sure that it was going to happen. Your government, who you pay, don't care two licks about you. Sleeps good at night, I'm sure. Not worrying about what's going on in Flint, Michigan. I understand that people look down on the ghetto or look down on less fortunate and stuff like that. And it feel like, you know, uh, somebody should stand up and say, you know, this just ain't right. It's just not right. Do I move my family away, you know? and try to fight this from a, a distance? Or, or do we stay right here at ground zero and, and keep doing what we're doing? So, you know, I, I deal with those thoughts every day. It's unfair and it's unfortunate, but it's also giving me a new look at how America is gonna start treating people. It's gonna be like almost, a, it's not a third world country, it's almost like every man for itself. Something happened here. Something that welded people into a community. What happened here is now happening in other places. It could happen in any city in the United States. It did happen in the city of Flint, Michigan. So they're probably having meetings, probably gonna have some more meetings and some more meetings to decide what should we do, what's most cost effective, what makes the most sense, and continue to let us die. Because that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing, they're letting us die letting us die. Not knowing what the potential that my daughter has and now to, to, to understand that it's gonna be shortened and cheated and she's not gonna be given the same fair shake that everybody else's kids has in around the world. So, hence my calling to be here to fight. I'm not going to give up on Flint. I'm going to be better than what I used to be when I was stupid. I'm going to be a productive member of society. I'm going to be able to go outside and it's going to be beautiful one day. I know it's bad out there. It's like a jungle out there. I can make it. 
Come on, look at somebody, give them half five as I can take it. Whatever the devil gives me, if God be for me. No, most people would have never saw me as a leader. I'm still reminded of that prison guard as I was walking out the door telling me that you'll be back. And that's what most of the world think, that you'll be back. You'll continue to do what you've done all your life, which is it's, it's easy to do because the world is not going to give you a second chance. real proud of Aaron, I really am, his wife, his child. I am concerned about his child, and he knows that, because I do see evidence that water has affected almost all of our children. And so I see him and his wife kind of intimately knowing it, but in denial. And uh, I admire them because they're young enough to leave, but they're committed enough to stay. The future looks really good. This beautiful face here, right? Say amen. No, you ain't gonna say nothing. You gonna say ABC's, ABCs so we can get you in school early? Let me hear you. Okay. a lot of pain and hurt and suffering in Flint. You know, I've hurt families. You know, I've, I've been a part of the streets. I've been a part of the, the, um, the problem, you know. So that's why I feel so dedicated and so much commitment towards being a part of the solution. 